I've been using Adobe Premiere for about six years, and at no point during those six years would I say that it's ever been good. And I've been motivated to talk about just how not good it is by a bunch of things culminating in a single experience that was particularly not good very recently. And the point of this video, I suppose, is mostly to sort of warn people, to let people know what to expect if they're considering using Premiere. I haven't used any other video editing software enough to really tell whether others are better, but I can tell you that Premiere definitely isn't good. So here's what happened recently. I've been dealing with some issues with Premiere Pro even before this recent update that happened on October 15th, 2018. Particularly, I've been having issues with playback performance being absolutely horrible. Then this big update comes along on October 15th, 2018. Um, Adobe, in case you don't know, they typically provide two large updates per year. You can see this one October 15th, 2018, April 3rd, 2018, and then down here, October 18th, 2017, April 19th, 2017. And each of these are a major revision of the program. And with it, it actually becomes a whole new program. When you go to install it, you actually are presented with a choice of, do you want to uninstall the old version? Or do you want to install the new version alongside the old version? By default, it doesn't remove the old version of the program. But I thought, okay, I'm feeling daring, right? I've been having issues with Premiere Pro recently, and I looked at this list of new features. Most of these, as usual, didn't really apply to me, but one in particular did performance improvements. I thought, performance improvements? Do you mean I can actually like playback stuff well? That'd be pretty cool. So I installed the whole thing and removed the old version of Premiere without even testing it. Here was my experience upgrading to a new version of Adobe Premiere Pro. First thing I noticed when I started it up, start a new project, look at this. A low level exception occurred in blah 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 code64.dll. Oh look, we got an exception. This pops up every single time I start the program. It doesn't seem to affect anything other than annoy me by popping up, but it definitely doesn't set a good first impression. Second thing, in my old version of Premiere, before I updated and uninstalled the old version, I went here. This is, I'm blocking this out, but this is my email address, basically my Adobe account. And I went to sync settings now and I pressed Upload Settings. Here's the list of my sync settings preferences, by the way. It's set to sync everything, including preferences slash settings, workspace layouts, and particularly keyboard shortcuts. However, when I went into the new Premiere and synced my settings and downloaded them, it didn't download the keyboard shortcuts. Or perhaps they were never uploaded in the first place, I don't know. Another uh, feature that I noticed is text doesn't work right anymore. So here, I'm going to I'm going to start typing a text layer. I'm going to click here. Now notice, look in this window right here. Notice how you don't see anything. Notice anything wrong with that? Aren't you expecting to see something? You know, like a text box or some sort of blinking line to tell you, "Hey, you you're about to start typing here." Here, I'll select some text. I just selected it. You can't see it, but if I press backspace, I just deleted a bunch of text. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be rendering properly any of the like information that tells you where you've selected or where your cursor is for text. It makes working with text really difficult. I can't see anything really. After messing around with some settings, I found something that gets around the problem and it makes no sense to me at all. But this is the um, basically the monitor here, where you look at what your video actually looks like. And this is the settings for the monitor. And if you go down here and you uncheck Show Transport Controls, hey, look at that. It works now. So what are the transport controls and why would turning them off make that work? The transport controls are all the icons that display down here. Basically, you don't actually need them. You can get to them with keyboard shortcuts and I assume probably through menus. Things like play, step forward one frame, export frame, comparison view. It's, it's just these icons appearing. That's all I'm turning off. And for some reason that makes the text boxes render correctly. That makes no sense at all. There's no sensible connection between those things. So text rendering is broken. Here's another new feature. What we have here is an MKV file that I've recorded. Have a look at what the new version of Premiere Pro does to the last three frames of the video. I'm not sure if it's changing the last three frames or just adding the last three frames, but look at this. The last three frames become red. 
They're just, they're just red. And this that I'm extending up above to cover up the red frames is the exact same video remuxed to a .mp4. The exact same video. All we did was change the container. Now it doesn't have the red frames anymore. So it's something about its handling of MKV files that has changed. It didn't used to do this in the old version. Now it just has three red frames at the end of MKV files. And the one thing that I had hoped had changed, the playback performance, didn't change even in the slightest. It was still just as bad as before. So technically this isn't something that changed in the new update, it just stayed the same. But I do want to show off the playback performance problem that I've been having with Premiere. So this is playback of one of my 1440p 60fps videos. I'll play this back in just a second to show you the performance. And if you're wondering why this maybe feels kind of meta and strange and why are there two mice on the screen, two cursors anyway, uh, this is actually a video that I recorded a little while ago just to document it. So I'm actually replaying back the video that I took of the poor performance. So I have the performance numbers up here for my computer. Notice how neither the disk nor the CPU gets anywhere close to maxing out while it's attempting to play back the video. Also notice how during the poor playback, which you'll see here by the choppy video, notice how nothing else is actually choppy. The audio continues to play back just fine. These bars continue to move. It's not the whole program. It's just the preview of the video that's choppy. Here we go. Yeah, so that's about, what, half a frame per second, roughly? Highly variable. And keep in mind, some of the CPU usage is OBS being used to record this. So in reality, it's using, I think, about more like 50% of my CPU. Also, check how long it takes for it to settle on a, just a single frame. So at this point, it's been giving me the poor performance in the playback, and then I've just paused it, and then I've tried to maximize this preview window here. Which, as you see, it looks all weird right now. That's because until it actually gets the actual full frame, it won't display it the full size. So this is all just waiting for the one frame to display, waiting for it to catch up. Waiting, 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 waiting. Hey, there it is. Of course, I've done a bunch of research to see if I can fix this in Premiere, and I haven't found anything at all. What I do usually find when I search for it is a bunch of people saying that you're trying to edit an H.264 video, which is kind of an end product format. It's not really a very good format for editing because you have a lot of keyframes with pretty long distances between them, which makes it harder to play back. I get that, but that's not at all an excuse for that horrendous playback performance. Why is it not an excuse? For two reasons. One, the hardware resources were not anywhere near maxing out. And two, other video editors don't have that problem. That's probably the most damning one. So one of the programs I've tried is called DaVinci Resolve which is completely free, or at least there's a free version of it and a paid version. I've been trying out the free version. This is DaVinci Resolve 15 and check out its playback performance of the exact same video that you just saw in Premiere. Huh, it seems to be using way less CPU and yet it's playing back almost perfectly 60 frames per second. Maybe if we seek around the video though and really stress it out, it'll have some problems. Let's see. No, that seems okay. I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's a loading screen. That's also like a loading screen. Or mortified or no, that's fine too. Oh look, that's fine too. So yeah, I, I don't care if the format is not ideal for video editing, it doesn't matter. Adobe Premiere can, can do so much better, and this absolutely proves it, because another program, which is free, does it vastly better than Adobe Premiere, and I pay for Adobe Premiere, which is especially insulting. To summarize, Adobe Premiere has a lot of problems. I'm very unhappy with it. If you're interested in video editing and wondering what program you should use, I don't have much experience with anything other than Adobe Premiere, just a tiny, tiny bit with DaVinci, but I highly recommend you try other things and see if they'll meet your needs because I definitely do not recommend Adobe Premiere.